Hi everyone, Janie here, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a pop-up gatefold card. And this isn't exactly my original idea, trust me, but it is my version of what I've seen. So first I saw Sam Calcott make a double pop-out gatefold card that was a five by seven, and I thought, wow, that's really cool. I would like to try to make that a little bit different though. And before I even tried that, I saw Debbie Adams' video where she made a pop-up gatefold card, and I'm like, ooh, I like her tutorial a lot. I would like to try to make one just a little bit different though. And so that's what I'm gonna show you today, but I will have links below in the description box to Sam's and Debbie's video so that you can see where I got my inspiration from for this pop-up gatefold card. Okay, this card fold is really easy, and I started off with a piece of eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock, and I cut that in half, leaving five and a half by eight and a half, and that's what I need to make the card. And because I've cut this in half, I now have enough to make two cards if I wanted to, but all I really need is this one. And even though I'm going to walk you through things, here, are the directions on how to score and the size of each panel and that is not the size that you will cut the layers to that is the size of each of the panels after you are done scoring so feel free to pause the video and write this information down or you can write it down as I show you I'm going to be using my creative craft product scoreboard and with the eight and a half inch edge of this cardstock going across the top, I'm going to start my scoring. Now, because the camera's on the opposite side, I'm gonna to have to turn this toward me, but I will put the measurements up on the screen so that you can see what I'm doing. And in fact, I'm gonna bring mine over here so that I can see what I'm doing. And so we're gonna score at two and one eighth inches, and that is the line just past the two, between the two and the two and a fourth. And so I'm going to score that first. The next one will be four inches. And then four and a half inches. And the last score line is going to be six and three eighths. So we have six and a fourth and six and a half. Six and three eighths is that line right between those two and that's what I'm gonna score. And if you're ever confused about that, you can just count over. So that would be 1 8 2 8 3 8 and so on. And so now all of the scoring is done, and now it just needs to be folded. And I'm gonna bring this in to show you what it looks like. Okay, so we're going to be doing a valley fold, two mountain folds, and a valley fold. So here we go valley fold, a mountain fold, a mountain fold, and a valley fold. And you can use a bone folder or your fingers just to really crease each of those score lines. And then once you do that, your card will look like this okay so it's kind of a well I would say it's kind of a W it's kind of an M <laughs> but it has this thicker part down the middle okay so this is what it's gonna look like and it's going to close just like that like a regular gatefold and then when it opens that's gonna pop up now isn't that really cool so that's the card fold and the decorating is totally up to you but I'm gonna show you how I'm decorating this just to give you some ideas. I almost forgot, you're going to need a belly band or I suggest a belly band. And the one I made is one and a half inches by, move that over there, by 11 inches. Um, you can make it longer or shorter. My suggestion is wait till you've wrapped it around the card so you know how much you need. And also you can make this you know, skinnier or, or wider, totally up to you. 
This is just how I made my belly band, and also I made it out of pattern paper. You can make it out of solid cardstock. So now let's move on. So I've already shown you the panel dimensions, and it's up to you how wide and how long you want your layers or how many layers you want. You may want two layers on each panel where I'm only doing one. So you can use the panel dimensions to decide how you want your layers. For my card, I cut the front layers at two inches by five and a fourth inches. And for the inside of the end panels right here, those were also cut at two inches by five and a fourth. And I've got two of those, one for each end. And then for these center panels right here, I cut those at one and three fourths by five and a fourth. And then for this center strip right here, I cut that at a half an inch by five and a fourth. And like I said, you can cut yours the size that you want or even do multiple layers. I'm gonna glue the front panels on for you without speeding it up, just because I wanted to show you that I'm gonna glue them on to make it look seamless. So there will be um, you know, no, no border in the center. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. And also when you do this, do your best to make sure that your pieces actually match up so that um, it definitely looks seamless. So let me just get this one on here. And as you can see, I'm putting it right to the edge. But I am making sure that the rest of the border looks good around the other, the other sides. So let me just get everything on here like so. Okay. And then I'm going to put this on and you will see what I'm talking about. And I know most of you already know what I'm talking about, but this is for those of you that aren't exactly sure. I want to make sure that I make it clear and not confusing. Okay, so put this one on. Get it lined up right to the edge. And actually when I lay it down, you can actually see that there is a border around, but not right there. And I need to get that lined up like so. And then I need to make sure that they both line up on this side. Well, my glue is still wet enough to move the pieces. Okay. And... Hold on. Sorry, I just really want to make sure everything lines up right. Okay. So that is what I'm talking about, where there is no border going up the center, it just connects. All right, now I'll put the rest of these on and um, I'll just speed that up for you or maybe I'll just cut it out. <laughs> we'll find out here in a second. While you're watching, I'd like to point out that you can use a different paper on each panel if you want, instead of using the same paper on each panel like I did. And even though you can add more layers, I didn't because I'm trying to keep my card from being too bulky so that it will fold easily. You can also add sentiments or die cuts on the inside panels if you would like. And there really are so many possibilities with this card. Besides the variety of ways that you can do the panels, of course there's a variety of ways of decorating and in a minute you'll see my finished card and how I decorated it. If you do use the same paper to decorate all of the panels like I did, well, except I didn't for the center one, but even if you did for that, do your best to make sure when you make your cuts that your pieces will match up. So let me get this up close here so you can see the yellow and the green, um, they match up on those two pieces. So you can tell that they were connected and it will look so much nicer that way. Now, Let's talk about what I'm using to decorate this. I love using stamps with coordinating dies, and today I'm using In Love Art's Easter theme dies and stamp set. It has three sweet images, the most adorable bunny I've ever seen, a sweet little chick, and a branch with a nest filled with eggs. 
And there are also five sentiments. And I colored the images with my Ohuhu colored pencils. Well, I really didn't do much coloring on the bunny. And then I die cut the images. And I'm really happy with how nicely those dies cut out the images. And it's a lot easier than fussy cutting, which is not my favorite thing to do. And here they are on my craft mat, just so you can see the size of them. So I stamped these sentiments, which are both from the In Love Arts Easter stamp and die set that I just showed you. And I thought this was perfect. It says bunny kisses and Easter wishes. And on the inside, I'm going to be putting that bunny right there. He's so cute. And so I just thought that was perfect. And now I'm gonna show you what I am doing with these. So I'm gonna be placing them on the front and I'm only gonna be putting glue on half and just attaching half of it to one side. So you will see what I'm doing. Some of you already know what I'm doing, but I'm just finding the halfway mark here and putting the glue on there. And I think I'll lay it open flat here so I can get it on there just right. Hoping that that is the halfway mark. <laughs> of course it is. And I don't mean halfway on the card, I just mean halfway across the card. And, you know, if I wanted, I guess I could bring it down a little bit further, but eh, straighten it out a little bit. And I do have a little glue right there, so I will use my, um, my glue eraser here in a minute. But right now, before that totally sets, I wanna make sure I get this one on in the right place. So, you see, half of the glue goes on this side. Hopefully I did that right. Okay. So I'm gonna line it up so it perfectly matches the one underneath. Okay, there we go. And that one also has a little glue. So in a second, I'm gonna come in and use my glue eraser. But now the card folds like that. Then you open it up and there's that sentiment. And now I'm gonna put the bunny rabbit in here and something else as well. So let me go erase that glue really quick first. Okay, I've got that done. And before I move on with decorating, I wanted to show you something because right now I just showed you that way to, to do a closure. You actually don't have to put anything there, okay? It could just be a gatefold without anything. But there are also other ways, and I kind of wanted to show you on this one. So I'm gonna kind of line it up like so. You could put two things if you wanted to, and have one open up one way, and the other one open up the other way. And then when they close, they close like that. So just, you know, another idea. There's so many ways to do this. I mean, whatever you wanted to put on the front, you could put butterflies on the front. But if you wanted it to be on both sides, just remember only glue half of it to one side and half of it to the other side. Whether you're doing it like I just showed you with these in separate places or overlapping each other like that. All right, now let's get back to decorating. Okay, so for the inside of my card, I am going to be using this adorable bunny rabbit and this love you sentiment that I stamped from a stamp I found in my stash, <laughs> which I don't have a lot of stash right now, but I did find that and I thought it was perfect. And I'm gonna put both of those on this little pop-up area. So let me turn it around because that's the front of my card or the right direction for me because I'm over here. And I'm just gonna put the glue down the center. And of course, you could use double-sided foam tape if you wanted to pop it up a little bit more, but I don't want to really add too much bulk to this. And of course, you could also use double-sided tape that would fit perfectly on there. So, little bunny rabbit, right down here toward the bottom. Okay. And then I'm gonna put this right above him up there. And 
for that, remember you just need to put it in the middle. Um, it might even be easier to just put it on there. But, you know, I like to do things a little bit more complicated. Just kidding. Okay. And I have to use my little glue eraser on that too. Well, it's really nice having a glue eraser when your glue oozes out. And I'm trying to get this centered. You know, I think it looks centered enough. Close enough. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry just for a second and I'm gonna come back and we'll see what that looks like and then we're gonna start on the belly band. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far and it will open like that. And I had originally thought that it was busy enough on the inside with all of the dots, but the more I looked at it, the more I decided it needed something else. And I didn't have something else, so thank goodness for Google, right? <laughs> so I was able to find these Easter eggs and I print them out and cut them out and they are going to fit perfectly on either side. So I'm going to do that right now because I want to show you that I am not going to glue the entire image down, okay? I'm only going to glue the bottom, and that way, if I would like to, you know, stick a tag with a note on it or anything down inside, that I'll be able to do that. So let me get this on here, and the other one on the other side, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, and also, I didn't want to put a lot because this is, um, it's folding in against the bunny. And if I put too much bulk, it's going to make it a little bit difficult to close. So let me show you here really quick what I'm talking about. I'll just grab a scrap that I have here. And so with it like that, I can stick something down inside. So let me turn it toward you. Sorry about that. So. By leaving that open, it gives it a little dimension because it's not laying completely flat. And I could put a tag or something in there with a little message. So I'm really happy that I came across those and now I feel a whole lot better about the inside of the card. And I have one more thing that I want to do on the outside of the card. So I'm gonna be putting the belly band on, but I also want to put this cute little bird, cute little chick. So I'm gonna put that right down here, I think. I think I want it on this side. And then we're gonna start on the belly band. So before I do that, because I'm gonna line everything up, here is what I'm using for my belly band. And this image is going to be going on it, onto, onto the belly band. and. Before I even get started, I'm going to be using my Creative Craft Products Corner Punch. It does notches on this side and corners on this side. And I want to round the corners of the one end because I'm not going to be placing my image over it. So this is actually going to be showing in the back, actually. I think I, I'm going to round the corners on both ends, even though I may have to trim it down a little bit. We'll just see how it fits on the card. So the way I like to do this. And this is just my way. You know, somebody else may actually just go in and score it, and I don't. I like to lay it on the card and then just bring it around and bend it. And the same thing on the other side. And that way, I know that it is the right size for this card. And so they cross over in the back, and like I said, I may have to trim it down, and it looks like I could probably trim it down a little bit. So I'm gonna go do that, and then I'm gonna come back, and we're gonna add the little chick, and we're gonna add the little the um, branch with the nest and the eggs, and maybe a couple other things. Okay, I've got it sized just right, so this is the front, this is the back. You do not wanna glue it to the card, okay? So what I like to do is I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the end of this section, okay? And then I'm gonna put a little bit of glue 
on the end of this section right here. And what that is going to do is it's going to connect it in two places, just like so. And that way it is connected completely. If we just did it on one area, the other part would be loose. If we did it, you know, on this area, that part would be loose. And so we now have the belly band in place and it will move up and down. It's still wet, so I'm afraid to move it too much, but I'm going to show you right now that it'll move up and down. I'm going to bring it over here because I actually want it to cover the sentiment. Okay, so that won't be visible. And I'm going to glue this on, and I think I'm going to glue it right here close to the edge so that it looks like the branch is coming off a tree that is over there somewhere. So, just add some glue here, and I'm not going to go all the way at that branch because I think that branch is going to stick off just a little bit, and I don't want it to stick to the card. So, I'm going to get this right on there. Probably should have put some more on that branch. Okay. There. Isn't that just cute? I think it's adorable, personally. Okay, and now I want to put the little chick on here. And I don't know if I want to put it right here under the basket or more off to this side. And you know what? I'm thinking since that's coming from that way, I'm going to put him right there. And I'm going to pop him up. And you're thinking, ooh, the belly band might get stuck on it, but you can pop, move the belly band up to take it off. It doesn't have to come off down the bottom. So I'm going to be using these 3D foam squares. I love them. They come in two different sizes. They have the little small ones and the bigger ones. And sometimes I like to use them together. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this like right up here by his head. And then I think I'm going to put a couple small ones off to the sides here. I guess one more. Okay. And we're going to stick him on there. And I think I might add some flowers or something. So I may finish decorating this um, off camera. Okay, maybe a little sticky goodies. Okay, got them all off. And I'm going to put him right there. There. Now, isn't that just adorable? And then this will just slide off and open right up for the recipient. I love, love, love it, okay? So I'm gonna see about doing a little bit more to this and then I will post some pictures right here as the video is ending so that you can get a better look at it. As you can see, I added some flowers, and instead of just posting a couple of pictures here at the end, I decided to do a little video clip to give you a better look. But at the end, I've also added a few close-ups of those adorable images. If you like this card and tutorial, I hope you also visit Debbie Adams and Sam Calcott's videos that I will have linked below so you can see where I got my inspiration from. And also in the description box, you're going to find a link to that absolutely adorable Easter theme stamp and die set from In Love Arts, as well as a 25% off discount code should you decide to shop there. Thank you all so much for stopping by, and don't forget to leave me comments because I love to hear from you. Happy crafting, everyone. Bye-bye.